Welcome back to my channel. This is Justin K. Prim, and today I want to walk you through my three camera setup for makers and creators to record and live stream their videos. So this is my three camera setup. I'm going to walk you through the entire setup. So this is a setup that's ideal for shooting multi-angle YouTube videos, as well as live streaming for YouTube or even live streaming to Twitch or anything like that. And I want to walk you through and show you how I've done it. The centerpiece of my video experience is this table right here. Now for me, this is my gemstone cutting work table. I've got my machine here that I use. I've got all my tools and accessories and everything that I'm gonna do is happening on this table. Now for you, this might be a table with art supplies or a table with a sewing machine or a table with some other kind of tools or utilities or drawing utensils or art supplies to create the thing that you're creating that you wanna document. So this is just a generic workspace. Now for me, the beauty of this setup is that I've got this in the corner of my house. So this isn't a studio, this isn't another building or another room, this is literally in my living room. So it was really important that the cameras don't come out into the kitchen or into this walking area where we're using to go between the dining room and the kitchen. So everything is nicely tucked away. I've got some natural light getting diffused from the outside and it's all pretty compact. And most importantly, it's right next to my computer workstation so that I can get everything hooked up nicely. So let's walk through piece by piece and I'll show you how I've done this and what choices I've made along the way. So I knew that I wanted to be able to see this desk from three different views. I want to be able to see my face as I'm sitting here working. So I sit down at my desk and that camera is really important because I want to be able to talk to my audience and let them see my face and see me talking. And we'll get into what, what else is there, but just let's talk about cameras for a second. So we've got the face camera here. The face camera also shows the desk. So this is the view of the face camera. So notice that you can see a bit of the machine, but you can't really see much of the other part of the desk. So if I want to show people all my tools, I've got an overhead cam. Now this camera is pointing straight down and I've got it lined up with the table so everything looks nice and even. So that's my top down shot. It looks something like that. So I can be able to utilize different parts of the desk and show what I'm doing. Now, since gem cutting is a meticulous art and I need to show really close up stuff, I want people to be able to see what my hands are doing here and that's what this camera's for. This is my close up camera and it is pointing right at the action. So that view looks something like that. And you can see if we come over here, that's the view of that camera. So it's very close up so I can really show people what I'm doing with my hands, which is really important if I'm trying to show or teach people how to cut a gemstone. So I've got the three cameras. Of course, the cameras aren't the only tools here, but just before we get into lenses, let's talk about the camera choice. Now I've gone with Nikon because I already had Nikon cameras before I built this setup and I know how to use them really well, but you might choose Canon or Fuji. At this point, they're all about the same. The important thing is that they're not too old. These are all three mirrorless cameras. Ideally, you'd like them to be all three the exact same camera. Now that gets kind of expensive when you're talking about the Nikon Z6s or Z7s or any of the other new ones. They're pretty expensive cameras and to have three of them is quite a lot. So I've got two Z6s and then I've got a Z50 up here because it's just a little bit cheaper. We've got our cameras set up. Of course, we've got three different tripods that are just allowing them to be where they are. If you need an overhead one, make sure you get a tripod that will allow you to do an overhead system. This is actually a stand that I previously used for a green screen. I stumbled upon this as I was getting ready to buy another tripod for an overhead setup. And I realized that, oh wait, if with a little adapter, I can actually attach the camera to the lighting stand. Now for lenses, this was a primary concern as well. I knew for this one, I needed to be able to zoom in and get really, really close. So I've got a 24 to 70 with a 2.8. This is giving me the ability to really be able to zoom in or zoom out however I needed it to be and also focus. 
This one is really important because I really want to tailor this shot. I don't want to see too much of my room, but I also don't want to be too zoomed in on my face. So finding the perfect lens to show you what you need might mean you have a zoom lens or it might mean that you just find the perfect length lens to show you exactly what you need to be. So this one is a 14 to 30. So this also gives me some room to zoom, but not quite as much room to zoom in as that one. For my final camera, this is not anything special. This is just the stock lens. It's a 16 to 50 and just allows me to have some flexibility with how much I'm zooming in and out. It's not a special lens at all. It's literally just the lens that came with the camera. So those are my three lenses attached to my three mirrorless camera bodies. Now every one of the camera bodies has an HDMI out. Some of them are mini HDMI. Some of them are micro HDMI. So I've got adapters and everything so that all of them are going to the full size HDMI. So you can can see I've got one coming out here, one coming out here, and one coming out here. So those three HDMIs. So now you could just have the three cameras rolling and sync everything in your video editor, but this is not ideal for me. It's too much editing, especially if you're doing long videos. Some of the videos I've recorded with this have been over eight hours long and I just don't want to edit all three of these files together that I would get off these three cameras. So what I've done, which also affords me some other opportunities, is I'm running all three of the cameras into this A10 Mini that I put a little shelf down here for. I want to be able to control this while I'm doing my business, but I don't want people to see it. So I built a little shelf down here. So what the A10 Mini does, it allows you to have four different camera inputs. So sometimes when I'm doing this, I actually have a fourth camera plugged in, but with this little living room setup, I only have three. So each camera has its own button, one, two, and three. And then I can also run my audio in. So my audio is gonna go in here. Normally I've got a DJI Mic 2 wireless receiver that's plugged in here, but currently it's plugged into my phone so I can shoot this video. But my, my wireless receiver is here. I've got a DJI transmitter that will have a lav mic, or I could just use it like this with the built-in mic, so I can move all around without worrying about cables. The wireless microphone goes into the receiver, which is plugged in here, and that goes into the audio channel that's up here. So I've got four different video channels and two different audio channels, though with this setup I'm only using one, two, three for the cameras and audio one for the video. The reason why I have it running this way is because if you run your microphone into your camera and then you run your camera into the A10 Mini, your mouth and the audio will be out of sync. If you put the microphone signal in through the A10 audio channel, everything's nicely in sync, or if it's not, you can adjust the timing with the software. So I now have three separate cameras through HDMI running into the A10 Mini. So that gives me the ability to switch between camera one, camera two, and camera three, that's my close up, and the ability to run the signal out. So I've got one HDMI cord that's coming out of here in the back, so you can see it's a wild mess of cables back here, but I try to keep everything organized. So I've got this USB signal coming out, and then one of these HDMIs is coming out. So I've got three signals coming in here and they're getting combined into one video signal, which I'm controlling in real time. So going from one camera to the other, this is all happening live. And then that signal goes out to this Ninja 5. Now, the reason why I got the Ninja 5, I wanted to be able to see what I was doing. That's really important because without some kind of screen, you have no idea what you're filming because you can't see any of the screens of the camera. I wanted to be able to see what I was filming, but I also wanted to be able to record onto something that wasn't my computer because in my tests, especially using a Mac, the computer is not reliable enough to shoot long videos without making some errors occasionally and I just couldn't afford any errors. So the Ninja 5, it's an expensive toy, but for me in this setup, it was really, really worth it. And the way that I have it set up right now is pretty interesting. I have it on top of this camera because that's the one I'm looking at. So when I'm talking to my audience, my mouth and my face are pointing the right direction so that I can see what I'm doing and still be pointing at the camera. So that's important. I don't want to be looking this way because then 
the audience can't see what I'm saying or, or what I'm doing with my face. So it's important that your monitor is right above or below your camera. So that's there for a reason. So then what I'm doing, I can record straight onto the ATEM Mini while I'm looking at what I'm doing. What I can do is I can actually put the output of the Ninja 5 into a television. So if that screen's not big enough, in previous setups, I've had a big TV right here in our old studio. So I could see what I was doing to really focus in on the close-up shots and all that stuff. In this case, it's a little bit different. So because I wanna be able to use this for streaming and specifically for Zoom, I have this set up in a bit of a different way. So the way that I'm running this is I've got the video signal going into the A10 Mini, and then I've got the USB cable coming out. That's this braided cable here. So this, the output is called webcam out. So you take this cord and you come all the way over here and I've got it plugged in to my laptop. And so when I'm in Zoom, which is what I use to do group calls with students or whatever, my computer just sees the A10 Mini as a webcam. So Blackmagic Design, that's the A10 Mini. I keep it on there, and then whatever I do on the A10 Mini over here happens in Zoom. So the screen that we're looking at is a Zoom meeting that I have open right now. Now, that works great, but again, I don't want my monitor to be this direction because the camera's over here and I want my audience to be seeing my face while I'm talking to them. So if I'm looking at my computer screen because that's the monitor, this is what my audience is seeing and it's not very nice. So I wanna be looking over here. So the way that I solve that problem is I've got an HDMI cable coming out of my laptop and running over here into the input of the Ninja 5. So the Ninja 5 is actually acting as an external monitor for my computer now. And so if I, for instance, pop up a little box that tells me who's in the Zoom or who's chatting with me. So there's my chat window and there's my participants window. If you come over here, you can see, I can see those boxes here. So this is just an external monitor for my computer. So if you're not gonna be recording and you're only gonna be streaming, then you really don't need to get a Ninja 5 because this is a very expensive way to monitor because it records. Just get a little $100 video external monitor and you can run it like this. Or just put a big TV right in front of your face right here under the camera or something so you can see what you're doing. But since I already had all of this stuff, this was a really good way to do this. So now what I can do, I've got my three cameras, I've got my audio recording. Notice I also have a mic up here, so if I wanna use the camera audio, this is plugged into the camera. Again, it's gonna need a little bit of audio syncing, but that's a backup or an, a room mic, essentially. And then I've got my nice close-up vocal mic here for my, for my talking. So I've got my three signals all running into the A10 Mini. The A10 Mini webcam out USB is running to my laptop, which is going into Zoom or going into Twitch or going into YouTube Live or whatever you're streaming with. And then I can see what I'm doing over here on the big screen or I can see what I'm doing over here while I'm actually facing the camera. So this is giving me a very nice perspective to shoot from. It's giving me three different options. All of them are very high quality options and it's allowing me to show everything I wanna show on this work surface. Now, obviously this is not the most cost efficient option. There's lots of cheaper ways. You can do this with three webcams that's how I started doing this. You can do this with three cheaper cameras that aren't mirrorless. I've gone through that step as well. You could do this with three or four different iPhones, though they won't sync into that box, but I'm sure there's a way of doing this with four phones. But all of those have some compromises, either compromising in video quality, compromising in sound quality, compromising in the ability to live manipulate your camera views in real time, compromising in your ability to record onto one video stream, which is important to me, or compromising in your ability to be able to plug this straight into your computer and have your computer plug straight back into your other monitor. So it's not a cheap setup. 
I'm gonna link everything that I'm using here in the description so you can see the specs for everything that I'm using. But if you wanna provide your audience with an extremely high quality setup that has actual lenses that can zoom in and out, that has actual controls for focus, for your f-stop, for your ISO, to make sure that all the cameras are white balancing together, you really need to have full featured cameras and not GoPros or phones or webcams because all of those things are just lacking in their ability for real-time control. And then over here, I've got my workstation. So I've got my two monitors for listening. I've got a big screen for doing my video editing. So if I've just shot a video and not done it live, I can take this file into Premiere or whatever your video editing software of choice is and tighten it up, take out all the mistakes and get everything perfect and then throw that up on YouTube or wherever I'm gonna put it. It also means that I can record via Zoom or via Twitch or via YouTube, however you're doing it, record my live streams and throw those into Adobe Premiere or whatever your software is and then edit those for uploading onto YouTube later. So it's really handy to be able to have all my computer stuff right next to all my work stuff, but then you have to position the camera so that you don't see it too much. Notice when you see my widescreen view, you cannot see my camera desk at all. All the camera stuff is out of frame, though sadly you do see right into my kitchen, which means the kitchen has to stay clean all the time. But I've got everything running into here. I'm running a Motu M2 so I can do voiceovers. So I've got a Shure microphone that plugs into the M2. So if I wanna overdub really nice audio quality that's better than my DJI Mic 2, I can also do that. So this is a very flexible setup that allows me to do streaming, multi-channel recording, and just regular or old video editing with two monitors. Now, the final thing that I didn't mention was lighting, and this is really, really important. So over here, I've got an Aperture 120D2. S again, since this is in our house, I wanted to kind of camouflage it into the background. So we had some stands of plants here, so I just convinced my wife that it was okay for this one thing to be looking a little strange. But so this stays plugged in all the time. The power box is down here, so I just turn it on. I turn all the other lights in the house off because those are all warm lights and I don't want warm lights mixing with my 6,000 Kelvin aperture light. So I've got that, that's my only light, plus some sunlight depending on the weather. And then I've white balanced all three of the cameras every time I use it to make sure that my outside light and my inside light are reacting exactly the same to all the cameras. Since I'm mixing everything from the ATEM Mini, it's really important that my exposure and my white balance and my ISO are all matching so that when I switch between my three different views, one of them doesn't look really, really warm and one of them doesn't look really, really cool. Especially since my bench is made of wood, it's really, really noticeable when one of the cameras, it looks more blue and one of them looks more orange or yellow. You can really see it in the wood as well as in the aluminum of my machines. So I spent a lot of time making sure that all the cameras had the same brightness, none of them were darker or brighter than other ones, and all of them have the same warmth and white balance, and I double check that every time I'm gonna shoot. But the cool thing is, once you have all this stuff set up and wired up, and you've got all your cables, you know, zip cord and tidied, and everything's nice, I've got a very clean workspace. You really don't see any of the cables. I never have to set anything up, and all of these are powered off of dummy batteries, so I'm not running batteries on any of this stuff. So if we come down here, we can see how it's all wired up. So I've got three cameras, the A10 Mini, the Ninja 5. They're all plugged into one strip. At the end of the day when I'm done filming, I just turn that off. All my camera gear is off all at once, so I don't have to worry about forgetting to undo anything, forgetting to turn this off. This also doesn't have a power switch, so you have to unplug it if you don't wanna be powering it all the time. So one easy button to turn the entire thing on, plus lights over here. Super simple, super easy, super flexible, 
Because for me personally, when I'm inspired and I'm ready to shoot, I don't wanna to have to set up cameras. I don't wanna to have to adjust focus, adjust color. I don't wanna to have to go underneath and plug, unplug everything. I can literally reach into here with my foot, click it on. All the cameras are now on. All I have to do is turn on the Ninja 5 and I am ready to go. So it's as simple and as easy as that and you can be up and streaming in less than five minutes from the moment of inspiration. Well, I hope that video was informative and useful for you. If you have any questions about the setup or about the gear, just feel free to leave a comment below and I'm happy to answer any questions about the hardware, the software, how I have everything set up or what I'm doing with it. If you wanna see some of the videos that I shot with this setup, I will put a couple of links at the end of the video and you can watch a couple gem cutting videos and see what a three camera setup looks like in real life. This has been Justin K. Prim in Lyon, France. Thank you so much for watching this video. If it's inspired or helped you, feel free to go onto my Patreon and become a subscriber. It's pretty much about gem cutting, but if that's your thing, I'll see you here on YouTube or there on Patreon. Until then, have a great one.